Gospel of John. Let me make that bigger. Um, I can make that screen a little bit easier to read. This is this is going to be a little bit of review and then step into the next section. The material in what's called the prologue of John, the first 18 verses, is just packed with theology. And another way to think about it is if you were going to watch a movie trailer for a movie coming up, uh, you know, they try to they try to give you the interesting scenes and themes of the movie in the trailer. Well, that's what John does in 18 verses. He is is providing the, the, the some of the main themes he's going to uh, come back to over and over again throughout his gospel. So even though my real purpose for today was to get to the material that starts in, chap uh, in chapter 1, verse 19, which continues the John the Baptist story, I thought it was worthwhile to list here 10 things that I saw in the only in the first 18 verses. So it's almost, it's almost uh, at least one every two verses, um, main points. And so quickly to go through them. Now, the way this is set up, there are my words on the left. And then the reference by, notice there's 10 numbers on the left and numbers on the right. So which verses I'm talking about when I, when I uh, refer to a concept. Clearly, the first three verses, those are the ones that a lot you, you may have already known. Um, the word was with God and the word was God. And we learn of verses down later that he's talking about Jesus. So Jesus was with God and was God in the beginning, actually before the beginning. So deity and power, Jesus is God. Notice he says that in chapter 20 when, when he is trying to tell people what his purpose is, he says, you believe that Jesus is the Christ, that is, the Christ is the anointed one, the Messiah, but also notice, comma, the Son of God. So he says it there. Deity and power was my first point. Then the idea of Trinity is, is included here, although admittedly, not all three, not all three persons, but the idea that both God the Father and God the Son can be fully God, and yet in a relationship as persons, is Trinity kind of talking. This, the Spirit doesn't appear in these 18 verses, but we, we know he is around in the story. The attributes of Jesus. He is life and light. It's, it's not, I tried to make this point last two weeks ago. It's not that he, um, he has life and light. John's point is that he is it. We wouldn't know what the concept meant if it wasn't for Jesus. These are attributes of God not something that he um, happens to have, like we could have life, and we may have light and darkness, but anyway. There's a spiritual battle going on. This light versus dark uh, appears. Uh, we see it when we're reading there. Uh, we know that the story of Jesus' uh, incarnation results in his death on the cross. At that moment, darkness thinks it is one. It has not won. Jesus wins on Sunday morning. 
Jesus calls men to repentance. Uh, be, uh, sorry, belief and repentance. He's rejected. We discussed this last time. It is, it's a sad story. If you believe that he is the creator God, and then you see this, see John talking about he came to his own, the, the word home is an appropriate image. He came to his own home and they didn't even recognize him. Sad, a sad story. The born again idea in, in verse uh, 12 and 13, he brings salvation through belief, rebirth. Uh, now, the word born again doesn't appear here, but the, the idea of regeneration and rebirth here. Well, the Old Testament reading today, it said something about two days rest are revived and third day will. Hosea, yeah, yeah. There, there, there are many. Yes. There are many. There are many places, and Jesus sometimes refers to those those testimonies from the Old Testament. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. I won't take the time. Um. In John 14, that's where we see the words, "The Word became flesh." Here, we have an expression of, of the theological concept of incarnation. God is with us. It says the word became flesh and, and dwelt among us. That's the old King James language. I don't know what your version of the Bible says, but the word dwells or dwelled is the same word as used in the Old Testament to describe the tabernacle. Jesus pitched his tent with us for a time. Uh, that's what John is talking about. Just as God pitched his tent in the desert, in the tabernacle, Jesus is uh, dwelling among us. He is eternal. That's, uh, I'm, that's a reference back to the first two verses. Uh, the story of the second person of the Trinity goes back infinity in the past. There never was a time when there wasn't second person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son are co-eternal. That doesn't mean that Jesus goes back forever. Jesus starts, this, that story starts 2,000 years ago. The incarnation happened at a moment in our timeline, and the second person of the Trinity joins, I'm sorry, let, let, let me try that the other way around. A human body joins the second person of the Trinity in the Bethlehem story 2,000 years ago. Got it? So Jesus starts at a time, but goes on forever. He has an infinite future, but not an infinite past. The second person. Oh, see, you li listen carefully. The second person of the Trinity goes back forever. Jesus goes back to Bethlehem. The incarnation is the second person of the Trinity becomes a human being. Yes, but, but Jesus did not exist before he was conceived in, in Mary's womb. Now, that I'm saying Jesus, be, be careful. The second person of the Trinity existed forever. But, but the second person is the Son. The Son of God existed forever. Ever. Jesus happens on Christmas 2,000 years ago. I, I, I think you're getting hung up on, we, we refer to Jesus, the Son of God, and that's correct. The Son of God is, no, the Christ is, is Jesus of Nazareth, yeah. Maybe put an ultimate thought Jesus, two natures, one person. Two names, human and a divine. 
the divine always exists. So Jesus is the divine always exists. Two natures. What the divine always exists. The new came into creation and lasts forever. Yeah, now. Yeah. So, so that, that, that is good. That's a good way to say it. The divine is infinite both ways. The human nature of Jesus is only infinite forward after Christmas 2,000 years ago. Okay? And both of those concepts we refer to as the Son of God. The Son of God is the second person of the Trinity, but we also refer to Jesus that way. Jesus is the Son of God. That's how. Pardon? Okay, that's that is correct. That's right, and then forward forever. The second coming, of Jesus will return. Yes, yes, and 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 our life goes on forever forward too. By the way, our eternal life means that we're living with him forever into the future. Okay, I didn't expect that one. To... <laughs> and then the idea of the gospel of grace apart from the law. The law brings condemnation and death. We fail at doing the law. The gospel brings life and truth. And, and that is in um, the last couple verses of this prologue, 16 and 17. Look at 17. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Okay, that's my summary of the 10 that I counted 10 so theological said the synoptic gospels right the word synoptic counts. matthew mark and luke are are written in a similar style and storyline you you can there there are things there's one over there on the shelf called a parallel of the gospel and it's it's easy to draw lines across and you see the same story not that every gospel tells every story, but there are many consistencies and, and you can draw lines across. This is how it was reported in Matthew. This is how it was reported in Mark and Luke. Those are the synoptic, which same. same. Yeah. Is that what that means? Yeah. It, it's, so it's, is there anything else synoptic in the Bible? Those I've never. Oh, 93% of the Gospel of John. Not in yeah, John. John is a John is John is an exception. Right. Bodies of information. John. Yeah. Um, as he said, it's it's not complete. It's ninety three percent. So there are some overlaps where you see the same story, but not very many. Yeah. I like to picture it as John was able to look back on his career and say, what else do I need to say that hasn't already been said? What did they miss? What did, yeah, yeah, what, 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 could, what can I add to this, this, the synoptics? What has God spoken through me? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Well, let's go ahead and move into the continuing testimony of John the Baptizer. I'm calling him John the Baptizer just because I, well, I just don't want the Southern Baptists to be able to claim uh, John as he's, he's a member. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's not a member of their denomination. So uh, this is a better description. He is John the Baptist. Um, John is an interesting character. Um, the gospel accounts, and by the way, Tim, this is one where we have consistency. Uh, the, the, the gospel story of Jesus starts with John the Baptist. I, now, I, I didn't go back and look to see if it's in all four or all three synoptics, and, but it, it's made clear in the, in the presentation 
that John is important. And I frankly was always unimpressed. Maybe I've seen too many movies where, you know, it, the, the content of his sermons is minim, minimal yeah. and he looks weird, yeah. but his job is significant. And that's what we're going to talk about. What did, what did John actually do? And the first thing that is being addressed here is what did John do? He scared the powers that be in Jerusalem. Two kinds of power, the power of the, uh, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, and the other power was the, um, uh, the priestly class. The people were supposed to go to temple to get forgiveness of sins. And here's this crazy guy in the desert calling people to repentance. And that's what we're going to talk about is what are other parts of his message. So he was attracting crowds and that was, that made them nervous. The other reason that the priestly class was nervous and maybe also the Pharisees was that they had a, what's the right word? Um, Taxation. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they had under Roman law, they had, the right to continue the Jewish religion as long as things didn't get out of hand, as long as Rome could collect its taxes and manage, manage the country, they didn't care what, the, what the, the nature of the local religion was. Probably throughout the empire, there were many different local religions. The Jews were just one of them. So they didn't want to upset that apple cart. We've got a good thing going. Rome guarantees us our right to practice our religion. So let's not mess this up. And here's again, this guy out in the desert. Is he going to cause trouble? Is he going to bring about a revolution which would get Rome upset? So anyway, the first question. Okay, the, the uh, powers that be in Jerusalem send a uh, delegation, and you've, if you've all seen any of these movies, they stand up on the, on the hill over the, over the Jordan and John's down in the water. Yeah. And they, they're asking him, who are you? And here, the, now we pick up John's account of this. This was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites, priests and Levites, I don't know that those are different things. A priest is always of the Levite family. So um, I'm not sure if this translation is, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, to ask him who he was. And John says he didn't fail to testify. He, he confessed, I am not the Christ. If you're worried that I'm the Messiah, Stop worrying. I'm not the Messiah. They then suggest other common explanations. There was a general understanding that Elijah would come before the Messiah. Well, I'm sorry, would return. Elijah died 500 years ago, but he would return before the coming of the Messiah. So, are you that? Are you, are you the re- uh, I don't, I don't think they actually believe in reincarnation, but it, it sure sounds like reincarnation. Yeah. Um, and of course he says, no, no, I'm, I'm not Elijah. Um, even though he fulfills the role perfectly. Yeah, he, does. He, he is not, he, he is, I think he's being accurate. I am not Elijah, I'm John. But, but he is actually fulfilling the role that Elijah was predicted to fill. Exactly. Are you the prophet? Now, that's a specific thing in Deuteronomy. Moses promises his people that he will, uh, God will send a prophet, capital P prophet, uh, at the end of the age, to bring about the coming Messiah and end of the age. So are you that? Are you the prophet with a capital P? 
is no. Well, okay, we've run through our normal explanations for this. Well, then, then who are you? Who are you? Give an answer so we can go back and tell them. And then John is a reference to Isaiah chapter 40, which, simply, which says, and this is the Elijah role, by the way, I am the voice of one calling in the desert, make straight the way for the Lord. So he, his answer actually is, I'm here to prepare for the coming Messiah. What exactly it means to make straight the way for Jesus? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, the people, uh, we're, we're going to teach them once they become, once the world becomes Christian, that you need to repent and believe the gospel. He's talking about repenting, get your life right, because the Lord is coming. Those are cl close, but they're not the same thing. If you think about that geographical region, it was difficult, physically difficult, to move from one place to another. There, there were not nice highways and roads, and, and it was difficult travel. So the imagery is, is effective. Make a straight way to go from, let's say, Bethany to Jerusalem without having to trip over stones and climb hills and stuff. Um, so the imagery is a good one. The king is coming. Wouldn't you want him to be able to have his parade into Jerusalem on a nice smooth street? Yeah. No bumps, no problems. That's the idea. That, that's John. Okay, if, you, if you're not the Christ, you're not the prophet, then why are you baptized? Here, John pulls out his membership card. His, his, uh, his authorization comes a lot higher than the Pharisees. I baptized with water, but among you stands the one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the thongs of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. I baptize with water. Um, Where's these uh, baptized with fire? Um, uh, well, it's not fire in, in this verse. Go way down to 33. In 33, he says, I, I baptize with water, but the one who's coming will baptize with the Holy Spirit. It's a different, it's one of the synoptics that refers to fire. And that's another example. Details. Yeah, differences. Um, the, the reference, John is saying, I, I'm not even qualified to untie his sandals. Um, in, a, in a Jewish household that was wealthy enough, um, there would be a servant who, who stood at the door when guests arrived, removed the shoes, and washed the feet. That was a, that was a job. In a, in, a, in, a, in a wealthier Jewish household. If you didn't have that, if you weren't rich, then you, ha you had a, a little vestibule in your front door where that stuff could be taken care of. Now, maybe your guests had to do it themselves, but you didn't walk around the house with your sandals on, and you didn't walk around the house with 30 feet either. Um, anyway, John is referring to this activity I'm not even qualified to untie the guy's shoes. That's so he's I'm lower, I'm lower than the slave who sits in the corner waiting for a guest to arrive in the house. Um, now the big one. In John 29, we begin to see it's it's not exactly here, it, it takes a few more verses, but we see the introduction of two disciples. We know that one of them is named Andrew. We assume that the other one is John himself, the author of this book. John and Andrew are disciples of John the Baptist. 
And they're standing with John one afternoon. And Jesus walks into the scene. And John says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Okay. Lamb of God, that concept. What, what, what do lambs do? Now, I, I'm, well, they don't do much. I, but, 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 but don't, don't think of frolicking in the meadow. I'm thinking of dying on an altar in the temple. That, that, that's, that's the image that comes to mind. The purpose of a lamb is to die. The people ate lambs as a regular diet also. So there, their purpose is to die. But, but the, the, the lamb of God is a reference to the sacrificial system. A, a lamb provided both by God and to God. A worship of God. Remember, uh, Mos uh, not Moses, um, Abraham, um, the, the ram is provided. Instead of killing Isaac, a ram is provided by God. Um, now, that, that's a ram and not, not a lamb, but it's the same idea. Okay. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. This is John trying to deal with that issue we were all dealing with with Linda's question just 10 minutes ago. Jesus appears, in, and we remember the story in Luke. Remember, in the story in Luke, Elizabeth gets pregnant first. So John is three months older than Jesus, if you read the Luke account. Okay? So Jesus comes after um, John in, in a human sense. But this guy is the second person of the Trinity also. So John is trying to explain that here in one sentence. A man who came after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Yeah. Okay. So all John is saying is, again, what we went through just a few minutes ago, the second person of the Trinity is infinite. I thought it was three months. Um, okay, I, I, yeah, it doesn't matter. I, um, but, the, but definitely in the story, Elizabeth gets pregnant first. When, when Mary is um, told by the angel that she's going to give birth, one of the evidences he gives to her, the angel says to her, uh, uh, for proof, Elizabeth is going to have a child in her old age. So go and see. And that's what she does. She goes and sees. So maybe it is six months. Now, um, because when John is listening, what the baptizer says here, he doesn't know that Jesus is the Messiah. Not yet. yet. Not but yet. Not, not yet. We, we're, we're, we're building up to it. I myself did not know him, J John is saying. But the reason I came baptizing with water was that so that he might be revealed. So God told John, go do this job because it will bring about the coming of the Messiah. And then we're going to get the story of the baptism of, of John. But that, that baptism picture is not actually here, but it's close. Then John gave this testimony. This is how John explains what authority he has to do what he's doing. He's still answering the Pharisees, remember. They ask him, what authority do you have to do this? Well, here it is. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except, and here it is, the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is 
he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. So God told John, watch. One day you will, you will, you will be baptizing and you will see after a baptism, the Holy Spirit descend on someone. That person is the person who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Or in other words, it doesn't say it, but to be able to baptize with the Holy Spirit, you have to be God. Only God dispenses the Holy Spirit. That's how I read that anyway. So there it is. There's John's authority to, to baptize. God himself told me to baptize because it's going to bring about this circumstance. One day, I will see the Spirit of God descend on someone, and I will know that that person is the Messiah. So the testimony of God the Father is who John is pointing to as his, as his power. Um, and the last line, I guess, I have seen. So he saw the Spirit descend, and I testify that this is the Son of God. Yeah, you know, John the Baptist said he's not a prophet. Yeah. Well, remember, though, to be accurate, I, I think John would have acknowledged that he was a small P prophet. Okay. He was just not the large, the capital P prophet. That was a special person that Moses had foreseen. Um, but, but John is doing exactly what he's told. So I agree with you. He is a prophet. Someone who, who is told to go, he goes, and he gives God's message to the people. That's a prophet. That's what a prophet does. All through the Old Testament. And their main job is to point to the Messiah. Yeah. So in a sense, you could say that John the Baptist is the last Old Testament prophet. Or the first New Testament one, depending where, where, where do you want to put it? After that, the first prophet is Jesus. Because yeah. the prophet is Jesus. Right. Well, anyway, um, I guess we're going to, because we got through the verse 34, um, He's going to repeat this storyline, but I don't have it to put in front of you. We're still dealing with the first two disciples. Doesn't make a big deal of it here, but he is going to in the next section. You'll, you'll definitely see the name Andrew. It is speculation that the other person is John. Um, John, as he often does, doesn't say the name John. He just refers, in this case, to another disciple. Andrew and another disciple were standing there listening to all this happening. Who is that is other? Trying to be humble, or are you I humble? I don't know. Um, would you put yourself in first person, or couldn't he have? Couldn't he have said it in second, even in second person, uh, third person, a uh, third person rather? Um, describe himself in third person, but he doesn't. Oh, content. He really, yeah, there's, there's a lot here. That's, that's your so, so John, so my, my, I guess my point was, I, as I told you, I was always a little disappointed in John the Baptist. He seemed to be crazy and, and uh, not have much content, but on a careful reading, there is a lot of content right. here. And his purpose was, it may have been a simple purpose, point to Jesus, he is the lamb, and actually in the story of the disciples, they do leave John the Baptist and go and start following Jesus. Because, you know, in the final analysis, it doesn't do any good to follow John the Baptist. <laughs> He's not the Messiah. Jesus is. Yeah. So these two disciples change, change teams. And there now we're going to see a couple other disciples called right bang bang bang. Uh, so that makes a good story too. Like I think a lot of us think of John the Baptist as a passion. Is his moment of greatness and he just goes away. Yeah. But actually, 
he's kind of working up to it. Well, he was working up to it. And also the, his story doesn't end here. Remember this story of uh, his uh, disagreement with Herod over having taken his wife's, I'm uh, sorry, let me get my, um, his, brother's, his brother's divorced wife yeah. is taken into Herod's house as a wife. Yeah. And that's adultery under Jewish law. Um, well, but see, but see, there is that's actually in the law. Um, it, it, but but he, but she has but he has to be dead. If if, if uh, in 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 a in a um, under Jewish law, if your brother dies, so that he his his wife is able to have other children and thus carry on his name, it was not. I don't know if required is the right word, but. You, you were expected to marry your brother's, your dead brother's wife, have children by her, so that that, so that lineage can continue. The mistake here is it was a divorce situation, not a death. So John is very adamant, send her away, send her home. She's, she's not supposed to be your wife. And of course, that puts him in jail. He ends up being killed. Remember the story of the dance, Salome dances and, and asks for the head of John the Baptist. Um, this is all still, though, in the relatively in the beginning of Jesus' ministry. We're still in the very first. Because yeah, John has a huge following. There has to be a lot of yes. and baptizing and yes. spreading the right, word right. while that's going Yeah, he's not present. I did, I did a little bit of an investigation. I, I wasn't very successful. How did the John the Baptist ministry wind up? Did all those disciples just one day go home? Did they all start following Jesus? Probably neither of those is correct. There's probably some other story. The disciples persisted for a time. I just couldn't find good good uh, information about what happened to the disciples other than other than john and andrew that's what this this story picks up but there probably were hundreds of others what happened to them did were they, they baptized with the spirit did they continue well that, that would mean that they became christians okay and that may be the end of that story maybe john the baptist disciples became christians in due course and that's the end of the john the baptist story I just don't know that. Couldn't find it in my little historical testing. Okay. One point I think is worth mentioning. Go ahead. Prior to this, Jesus had been a private citizen. Yes. On this day, his public ministry was inaugurated. The coming of the Holy Spirit on him with the voice from heaven testifying. This is my son. That next day is when he began his life. My question is, did the Holy I Spirit mean, come in with Jesus when he was born or when this happened? Be careful how you describe this. Remember, <laughs> remember the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is one of the three persons. Jesus is also one of these three persons. So Jesus is not a man who just one day got an extra heavy dose of the Holy Spirit and thus became spiritual. That is a that so from birth he's this. He's yes. So, so the, the deity on earth. Yes. Yeah, he's already deity. He he doesn't need the Holy Spirit to be deity. The Holy Spirit is just showing up at this scene. God the Father is speaking from heaven. The Holy Spirit rests on his shoulder. They are, they are a unit, one. I think of it as the Holy Spirit commissioned Jesus. He was sent by the Father, commissioned Jesus to begin his life. Yes, but that doesn't make him deity. He was already deity. He was already deity. Yeah. Um, he had the power. Um, we just have to be careful. Because the Arian heresy was the idea that Jesus was just a man, 
who, who got a good dose of the Holy Spirit. So he could do wonderful things and even call them miracles. Uh, but he was not God. So. Well, that's, that's the thing. He was born God. So he doesn't need the Holy Spirit to become God. We need the Holy Spirit to become Christians. But Jesus, he, yeah, it's, but, but remember, he's one of three persons. The Holy Spirit is not Jesus. I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit is not the second person. And the second, the, well, in the, in the sense that God the Father was in him. Um, we, we honestly don't know how the three persons work. They are separate. Yes. The Father is not in the Son. It's a separate person, separate roles. Yeah, it, we, we, there are some people who are a lot smarter than me who, who worry about. I, I know that when it comes to the Trinity, you're supposed to express them as three persons. And the word per, the name the word persons means what we normally mean person to me. So when we say the word person, we, we think of separate individuals. Okay. So so we try to hold that in our head. Our Godhead has three separate individuals. But we also say that God is one. He is one divine essence. One divine essence, not three divine essence, one divine essence. So how do you do both? And the answer is, I have no idea. That's we have no recorded history of Jesus growing up till that time where he starts his ministry. Yeah, it would be, there, there weren't, the, the, the only story we have is the one where he was teaching in the temple. Oh, right. Well, when he was 12, he was 12 years old. And, well, the, the story there is that, that Mary told Luke that story. Uh, uh, but, but who knows? That, that's, a, that's only a tradition. Mary told so Luke. Like Cana is a sort of miracle witness. So. Yeah. Right. So it is a very interesting. So we have a pretty good picture that day at that time of the Trinity. We've got the Father doing a job. He's He's uh, testifying at who Jesus was. He's at the baptism. He's talking he's about the baptism. That day this, baptism. That's right. God says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. So that's a testimony. That the Holy Spirit's job that day was to commission his role as Savior Redeemer. Okay. They were always, so I, I think the problem is myself, Shirley, that we refer to him as the Holy Spirit. It sounds like the holy vapors. It sounds like a thing, but it's not a thing. It would actually be better if we just dropped the the and called him Holy Spirit. As a name. Like As we would name. like we would like say Jesus Tim. Christ. We don't say the Tim Wentworth. <laughs> you came in the room. The Tim Wentworth <laughs> came into the room. We say Tim came in the room. Right? Yeah, you say Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ you say Holy Spirit. Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't of something that walks through the Trinity. Three separate persons. Right. Huh. The Holy Spirit is within the Christian body. That, that, that's God true. That's right. The Holy Spirit. There you can say within. The Holy Spirit indwells us, yes. within us. As a person. Yes. Okay, it's time to end this class. We usually close with the Lord's Prayer, so let us pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
now just to uh, just in case I, I wasn't exactly sure who was in the room when we I previously announced it we will not have class 